All right, good morning, everyone. Let's get started. If you'll stand with us, and we're going to have a prayer and pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first May meeting. Today, May 11, 2020, just after 9 a.m. We'll begin with item one, time for public comments and or requests for information on non-agenda items in accordance with our Open Meetings Act. Anyone have any general items to address at this time? All right, and as we go through here, I'll give you each an opportunity. If you would like to say something on any particular agenda item at the beginning of that item, uh, just wave at me, let me know. We'll try to keep the conversation to a minimum while the commissioners are considering each one of these. Item number two, consider and possibly approve minutes from our last meeting, the April 27th, 2020 meeting. Make that motion. Motion for approval is made by Commissioner Applewhite. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor say aye. 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 Item three, report from commissioners regarding work status. I'll start down here at the table, Commissioner Fitch. We uh, cleaned some uh, ditches out on 11 Point. We had a pretty good drainage issue out there that we're going to be working on some more this summer. We're going to put in a few uh, culverts and uh, some of the cross culverts. Uh, we're going to be working on that drainage too so that'll drain better. We also had uh, some trees down and two storms that have passed through since the last meeting on uh, 2730, 1220, and 2470. digging out some base failures and uh, get ready for some chip seal on uh, 2500 and on 2916. And uh, we, my part-time mowing man, Jerry Ward, to come to work last Monday, and so we started around mowing and we got uh, most of the monocellar blotted area and we got out there mowing and we should finish that up this week. And we still we did uh, some side cutting out in the Monticello area last week. So, that's what I got. Commissioner Parker. Uh, we spent all week, a uh, week before last, after the last meeting, uh, picking up trees and all. We had several down in several different locations. Uh, last week, we spent most of the week over on, on uh, 3160 installing some culverts and, and uh, cleaning out ditches over there. Uh, we're in the process today of, of uh, I had a one that collapsed on me across the road down on 4365 and we started today replacing it and got another one that's, that's uh, collapsing on 4235 uh, and so we're in the process of, of getting that getting those installed today maybe before this old rain hits so uh, we got got called out again Friday on on several trees down and and uh, uh, on uh, that one culvert down there that had, had caved in on us so we had to had to go do some patchwork on it until we could could get to it today I'd picked up the culverts on Thursday I guess it was in uh, Gilmer and uh, got them here but we didn't have a chance to put them in so we had to start that today and going to try to get them in today before this other rain hits starts tomorrow. So. We uh, spent all the week before last cleaning up the trees and stuff that the storm hit. And then uh, this past week, we replaced uh, two 48 inch culverts, one on 1828 and uh, 3240. And uh, we're processed. We got seven more smaller ones to put in this week. We're starting today getting them. And then we're going to start uh, patching this stuff on the roads again. 
It's, and then we had Friday, we had to go out with, uh, there's four trees down between Argo and Sugar Hill and Talco. We had a pretty long day Friday. Most of the week, and then this week we replaced uh, several culverts and uh, getting them ready for seal coating. Who's going to be the, who's going to have the first seal coat job this season? Uh, Not going to be me because I've got I still got a, some work I've got to do, and, and all on, on my roads I can't get the weather to cooperate long enough for me to get mine totally ready. So anybody else close to ready? Close to ready on several, with little, uh, not not enough for a two or three day crew working on it. Okay. I, I don't have that much ready. The rain got it. Put us put back. Plus rain all this week and part of next week. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Item number four, discuss the Neal subdivision with possible action to follow. Here in the audience today, we've got Gary Neal. Gary is the one that's going to be uh, putting in this subdivision. And Gary, why don't you just take a minute and tell folks where you've got your subdivision and what you're planning out there. Uh, come on up here. People are, people are curious. Uh, hi, I'm Gary. Um, the subdivision is uh, 30 acres uh, close to uh, College Road. Uh, what is that, 17, 35? And where does that cut through that goes, goes right by Walmart? 48, Okay, so whenever it dead ends, it'll be right in front, uh, in front of you on, on the right. It's 30 acres there that we've uh, plotted out. Um, we're gonna start with seven quadplexes. Uh, we'd like to start with two. Uh, just because we want to save money, save, save some money, um, and see how that goes. And then um, that'll be phase one. Um, then we'll, we'll end up with seven on a cul-de-sac on, uh, on the back side of it. The front side will have uh, single family lots for sale. Um, so that'll be the uh, process. Hopefully we'll get going on it with you, if you guys like it. Yes, sir. Gary has gone through the process of completing his checklist for our subdivisions. Let me read here a letter from uh, Sergeant Bain talking about this. Uh, on or about December 9th of 2019, communication with Sean Napier, Municipal Division Manager of Engineering Services and Testing, was begun in regards to the proposed Neal subdivision. This, the proposed subdivision is located at 1735 and County Road 4815 in Precinct 4, will be completed in two phases. The first phase will consist of multifamily units constructed along a new dead-end road with a cul-de-sac to be constructed on the north side of 4815. These multifamily units will be on seven lots that range in size from 1.65 to 2.2 acres. This is in accordance with requirements listed in the Titus County local orders regarding on-site sewage. Additionally, Mr. Napier has provided all the required documents and information as required in TAC 285.4. These documents include drawings of the proposed lots and structures and sewage disposal areas drawn specifying that disposal areas were calculated at twice the amount of water usage volume estimate for each structure as specified by the local orders. I've reviewed all the information and I'm satisfied with the work and findings <clears throat> and I feel they may proceed with the proposed Neal subdivision. In my communications, I have informed Mr. Napier of the requirements listed in the planning and development procedures as to the road construction and have encouraged that he and his clients meet with Commissioner Jimmy Parker on the matter. So from the drawings here, it looks like I see about 953, call it 1,000 feet of new road. Uh, all these documents appear to be in order. It's a good looking subdivision. Uh, what do we need to do regarding this new road? Have you uh, looked at where this is gonna be and such? Yes, sir, I've looked at it. Uh the only thing that that, uh, that
that I can see that we need is just the, the bond that he'll, he'll need for the, for the road and all. And that's the only thing that, that I have seen that, that we really need. Uh, Gary, if you'll get with Commissioner Parker and discuss road and the bond, et cetera, calculate the pricing, calculate the bond, I would suggest, uh, based on what we've got here, everything else appears to be in order. I think it'd be a good idea to get the bond in place prior to final approval, but I think this is ready for uh, approval on all counts. Uh, pending completion of the uh, agreement between you two on the road and getting a bond in place. Okay. Commissioners, any questions on this? No. Gary, anything else we need to know? Yeah, just just call me, Gary. Uh, you've got my number still, hadn't you? Okay. Just just give me a call and and. Uh, uh, Probably this afternoon, sometime if you can or want to, yes, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get together on it. And yes, His number's at the top of that agenda. If you don't have it there, there's there's one right here. Like the one closest to you. If they uh, when they do widen that road, is that going to affect this subdivision? Or is right away and stuff when they when they widen well, seventeen thirty five yes sir good question are are y'all aware of the widening of County Road seventeen thirty five uh, yes sir okay okay I don't know specifically how it'll affect where you are you could always go and talk to Tech Dot they could show you those plans there and specifically. But I think that'd be a good idea. I'm glad you brought that up, just to make sure that that's not going to cause any uh, need to change any of your plans based on what they're doing on 1735. And that project's supposed to start, uh, you know, next year. I'm going to say, purchasing the right of way will begin hopefully latter part of this year, and then construction perhaps in 2021. And go. The local text dot office. Text dot the local Mount Pleasant office. I get you that uh, information if you need that. But I think it'd be a good idea to visit with them, show them what you've got. Just be sure there's no no surprises there. Do you know anything about that? I don't imagine it's going to be a conflict, but it would just be good to know. Yes, okay. Thank you, Dana. Plus, you know, we've got well, the, when Tri Water, they'll have to move that place. They'll have to find some what they're going to do there, too. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good idea. Yeah, and it's going to. Yeah, it's going to subdivision. Uh, that, uh, uh, the Tri Water Station will have to be. Move back some on there, so because they'll have to re put it up and take the old one down. Yeah, that's, yeah. They have to get have the to new one up before the old one gets there. Yeah. We've got all the documents that we need. He will get uh, get with you, and once you present to him that bond where you're committing to properly building that yeah. internal road there, then I'll sign off. This. Okay. All that should be able to happen fairly quickly. Okay. No, because we're. I'm. I'm going to suggest that they go ahead and approve this tentatively with the final requirement of that bond for the construction costs on the road. And 
Yeah, I think you can get those bonds typically within a couple of days. Um, but he'll make sure that we've calculated the road cost so that we can calculate the right amount of the bond. Yes, sir. All right? Okay. You want to make a motion on this, anyone? I'll make the motion. Okay. And the motion is to approve, approve pending, pending the bond. Uh, presentation of the bond for the appropriate amount of the road. Okay. Second. Second by Commissioner Fitch. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number five, consider and possibly approve the temporary relocation of the veteran service officer to the former tax collection office at the courthouse annex. Steve and I have had a couple of discussions about this and I don't think that uh, we're talking about making a permanent move here. Steve, why don't you tell them what you've got in mind here for having your interviews there in Judy Cook's old office. the building to, okay. to work remotely during the initial phases of the COVID we handled a, a in excess of 20 cases uh, from my home during the initial few weeks of this uh, processing claims and benefits for veterans uh, but until such time as we have a vaccine available uh, the veteran population, including myself, are among those that are most at risk, not only age-wise, but uh, many with underlying conditions and compromised immune systems. And uh, if there's a box there to be checked, we check most of them, except for the handsome and debonair part. We haven't got that part down yet. Uh, but what I was thinking about is, uh, providing some uh, social distancing for personal interviews, uh, much like county clerk has in her office petitions. And I've noticed that there's a, you know, empty spaces across the street at the annex, the old automobile registration section, that those could be used to provide social distancing and uh, accommodate the needs of veterans seeking uh, claims and benefits. I don't see the need to transfer the technology portion of the office, such as fax machines and copiers and all that, uh, by doing a good job of planning the uh, individual interviews and have documentation prepared in advance uh, for exchange. Uh, the petitioned areas will allow that safely. Uh, on as far as needs of the county, of course, would be access to the to the facility. Uh, I would utilize an N95 mask. It's a little bit different than this. I have one here, but I'll provide those myself for my use. Uh, I will require my clients to provide a face covering. I'm not requiring that the county provide it, but it would be one of my requirements in making a an appointment with a client that they bring their own face covering. If that's something else that the county wants to consider, I leave that to you. But the only other thing that I see that we need would be uh, hand sanitation. Uh, and that's the only thing I can think of. I would utilize my own laptop for access to internet in case it's needed and transfer of files. But I don't see the need to have the office set up over at the tax center. Okay. Again, I don't don't know that that's something that the county needs to provide, but it would be a requirement I would have of my clients to, if they're going to come to an appointment, to have a face covering. Not necessarily. They can be seated, you know, while I'm doing whatever I need to do. But most of the most of the time will be in direct communication because we will have talked on the phone and planned, hopefully, all the documentation that they'll need, and it'll just be an exchange of documents. Explain it to them and tell them to fill them out, bring it back, and we'll proceed from there. 
right now all current appointments or or uh, interviews are being conducted by appointment only I keep the door locked downstairs and uh, try to contain it as much as possible and I must uh, uh, commend the, the county on its efforts to protect the citizens as well environments like the commissioner's court and uh, Dave and them have done an outstanding job in helping maintain the sanitation around the courthouse and other properties of the county. They're to be commended on what they've done. I would say uh, three, four times a week possibly. Some of those are just conversations, but you know, I, I never know until uh, until they actually ring the phone and make the arrangements. Right. Uh, if they would, they would have access to the outside of the annex, right through the lobby, but uh, they wouldn't have access to the inner sanctum of the tax office until I let them in. Uh, just for a, a note for public information, we've got a, this is National uh, Military Appreciation Month, uh, but coming up uh, May 13th is Children of Fallen Patriots Day, May 15th, Peace Officers Memorial Day, it's half staff, May 16th is Armed Forces Day, and coming up on May 25th, of course, is a half staff, half day Memorial Day. Thank you all for your support. Does anybody have a any idea how much you're co costing about it's going to cost to get this done? Pardon me? Does anybody know how much this is going to cost to get it done? Uh, it's going to take me across the street. We don't we don't anticipate any cost. We're not reconfiguring any offices or anything. It's just a temporary meeting place. Computers? No. He's not. He's not bringing any computers up there. His his phone and his computers all stay in his office. This is just occasionally when he has to interview somebody and wants to have it with that glass in between. Them. All right. I need approval. To do this, make a motion. Please. Motion made by Commissioner Applewhite to approve Steve conducting occasional interviews in the old uh, tax office at the annex. Second. Second, Commissioner Fitch. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thanks, Steve. Item six, consider and possibly approve accepting the sole source purchase affidavit from P2 emulsions for the following items. Stabilizer, rejuvenator, ROC, CWE-2, CWP, and all P2 road primes. Who's gonna explain all that? You want to, you, she's got the documentation. I mean, would, Mr. Fitch, would you get her a microphone? John. We're required, we're required to um, enter into the minutes that y'all are aware, I'm sorry, Mr. Riddle, we're required to enter into the minutes of the court that y'all are aware that we are purchasing items that are subject to the sole source. Um, and that the only thing that I'm aware of at this time is the P2 emulsions. They brought us the information and we just need to read it into the minutes. And Judge Lee's met those requirements now, so we just need you to accept that. I believe that uh, Mr. Parker is the only uh, precinct that's using those uh, materials at this time. So this is a product that we can't get from just anybody there. It's unique to them. Correct. And there, these are the ones out of Waco? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. what, right. what does sole source mean? Is that the name of the company or is that? No, the name of the company is P2 Emulsions. What does that mean, sole it source? Means they're the only place you can get it. Rather than going through a bid type process, 
disk, we know that they're the only place we can get it, so we approve it that way, as if they're, as they're the sole source provider. Is that right? No, there's other people that to provide this. Ergon, right out here, provides it. They call it a different name. They have different names for it, but the same products are made by Ergon out here by Walmart. They call it a different name, Mr. Riddle, but these, these items here are patented. That's the reason why no one else can provide those. Oh, okay. They have some, some patent and some proprietary method that they use to, to develop those emulsions. So maybe it's a similar product that Ergon it, has? It's yeah. similar, but it's, it's something that they have developed that they're using. One of them being that ROC that I use, that I put on that overcoat. Uh, is is one of them, and they they just added these others in there in case we ever needed them. I did use the stabilizer also on the the uh, road out at on thirty one fifty five. So, all right, you all want to approve P two as your sole source provider? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion is made by Commissioner Parker to approve the P2 emulsions as the sole source provider on these particular products. Second. Second by Commissioner Applewhite. All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. uh, no. We have nay from Commissioner Riddle. Item number seven, consider and possibly approve the purchase of 2,000 masks and three thermometers for use by the district, county, and justice courts. Uh, we had a meeting with all the judges, the judges, the JPs, myself, and the county attorney, and the two district judges putting together a plan that the state is requiring for opening back up our court proceedings here in the next few weeks and months. And these are two of the things that came out of that meeting was providing masks for those that participate in this court process, especially those uh, close quarters hearings. We're holding off on any large groups for a while, but there will be the ability to have some small hearings that are spe specifically very important to the district judges uh, as those come uh, about. And so they asked uh, me to come up with some masks and thermometers. One thermometer for the JPs one for the district court and one for uh, the county court. With the help, those were $70 a piece, total of three, total of $210. We were able to get, with the help of Chief McRae, 2,000 masks at no charge uh, through uh, his, um, I can't remember what the name of it is, uh, through his governmental sources. No charge on those. Those were delivered last week. I've got a couple of packs here opened up so that you can see what those look like. So that was potentially as high as a $2,000 cost. We got those free. Those should last us uh, as long as we need those, I would hope. So I'm asking you to approve the purchase of three thermometers, total of $210 that we got through uh, Thurman's ProMed Pharmacy. Make a motion we approve. Motion to approve that purchase is made by Commissioner Fitch. Second. And a second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chief McRae, for getting those for us. Item eight, approve oral and written reports. I think you've got your paperwork there with you. Make a motion. We approve the report. Motion for approvals made by Commissioner Fitch. Second. 
Who was that? Second Commissioner Applewhite, all in favor of approval, say aye. 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 Let me get you this for your signature. Out of nine is our treasurer's report that Cheryl's given you. Thank you, ma'am. Make a motion for the treasurer. Motion to approve treasurer's reports made by Commissioner Applewhite. Second. Second by Commissioner Fitch. All in favor say aye. 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 Need your signature on this as well. Item 10, approved budget amendments. We have no budget amendments today. Item number 11, signed pay orders and approved payment of bills. Make a motion to pay our bills. Motion to pay is made by Commissioner Parker. Second. Second by Commissioner Fitch. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number 12, closing comments. Uh, John. For those of you that haven't heard, uh, Willie Williams, longtime great guy and leader in this community, passed away uh, yesterday. So keep his wife in your prayers, please, Willie Williams. Uh, reminder that our next court date uh, would falls on a Monday holiday, so we will have that court date 12 days from now on Friday, May the 22nd. Friday, May 22nd. Uh, through yesterday, we had 37 uh, cumulative cases of COVID-19 here in the county. Fortunately, a slow weekend. I think we only added a couple on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we've now got Roger Brandon, the plant manager at Pilgrim's Pride, joining us on our call in the morning. Uh, Roger and his uh, team are doing a very good job, uh, doing the best that they can to control uh, any COVID spread within that uh, within that entity, and they've got gosh 2,800 people, I guess, working here. So that opportunity is there. I'm very pleased that we do not have cases in any of our nursing homes, in the jails, the areas where we're very vulnerable. So all in all, I, I'm very pleased. I, it's disappointing that the numbers continue to climb, but this is not unique to. Titus County, this is happening everywhere and we're no farther out of line than anybody else. So we continue to encourage uh, doing the things that you know you should be doing, social distancing and uh, coughing in your sleeve and avoiding handshakes and staying home as much as possible and abiding by the new rules that our restaurants and salons are trying to abide by. We continue to encourage masking when you're in general public, especially in large retail stores, really any kind of retail establishments, but that's uh, up to that individual store, how they, how they deal with that. It is not a mandate of the governor, it, but it is a strong suggestion. So we will have our today's meeting at 10 o'clock and see if I have any additional information today, and I'll continue to try to put that out as soon as I have new noteworthy information. Uh, Commissioner Riddle. On this uh, 
well, it's uh, called, this year is called CTIF, Con County Transportation Infrastructure Fund. A copy of the letter, then this year, it was CERTS in 2014. And we got to apply for the grant. And I, I have a copy of the letter and I, I have a application. I, I, it, the letter was to you, and but we have until April, or May the 27th to apply for that grant. And I one got of the, that for you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. I still, they wanted to, one of the questions, how much did we have? And I had how much Precinct 1 had, but I, I should have known that Fitch was going to take care of it. Well, we didn't have a copy of what we turned in last time. And then this is what we're going to need to fill out and have Cheryl uh, stamp it with a, uh, her uh, notary. And I've got you the, the road numbers and everything. We need to write down all your repairs. So this will be our annual road report. We need to turn that in. That's one of our things we're required to do. And this year, so in 14, we got $366,000. This year, uh, we got we're about $159,600. So the, the legislature gave out $250 million. So if all 254 counties apply and get their money, then we're getting 160 if we turn in all our paperwork. If uh, some counties don't turn in all the paperwork, then we may get some more money. So I'm on the back side of this, uh, here's the last time I did 14, here's what we need to fill out for this time and we'll take it to Cheryl and have it notarized and put it back in my mailbox. Um, on the back is a list of what we want to complete this year and put down, I'd say do it, you know, I mean, you don't have to put everything in the world you're going to do if you want to. I'm going to, I'm trying to keep up with pretty much everything I'm going to do. They're only going to look at about $40,000 worth of work, takes it all to get back with us and say, oh yeah, you did that on that one road. So then we'll get our money afterwards, sometime next year, uh, get the check. So. I've got the application, and I'm in touch with the ladies, Allison and Austin. I'm not sure who I'm going to be contacting in the uh, Atlanta office, but this Allison has called me, and uh, she's uh, made sure I turn the application in correctly. So I'll get with her. I can turn it in Friday. I'm going to get this done by Friday and have Cheryl notarize it. And I swear in front of her, and then put it in my mailbox. I'll send all that in, and we'll we'll be good to go. We we submit that as a county rather than individual precincts. Yeah, as a whole county. It's one application. Yeah, and then we'll we'll divide. We all each precinct should get around forty thousand dollars, maybe a little bit more if it's not all taken up during the, which will be easy to prove. But, but that so that hundred fifty thousand was the amount unique to Titus counties. Uh, uh -huh. big, bigger so counties get more, million. smaller counties yeah, get some less. Counties got two million. Uh, but the, we are considered a, uh, a economically disadvantaged county. There's only 70 or so counties in the, in the state that are, so that may uh, apply for us to get a tad more dollars. That's due, due to the census. So that shows you how important the census is. And, and even though we submit projects that far exceed that amount, it's not going to hurt to put too no, many so projects. Turn in projects that exceed it in case we get extra monies. And then they can say, oh, yeah, you're approved on that. And they'll get back with us on that. Mr. Riddle's done it before. Okay. 14, they did it once before. So. That's a good program. Uh, also, uh, the safety program. Gra grab your mic there. Just uh, your uh, the safety program we're in with TAC. Last year we got twelve hundred dollar, twelve hundred forty dollars. This year we got sixteen hundred fifty one dollars. So there's items you can buy. Uh, so I try to get a package deal where we all get kind of the same thing. Last year we bought traffic cones. This year I went through all the items that we, they pick out all the items for us. And so I, if you look up a category with Granger, most of the stuff you. You're only allowed to buy certain things. So what I bought was uh, some leather safety gloves and a few pairs of uh, uh, eye protection safety glasses and some small uh, magnetic suction light bars that are amber and white that you can put on your pool truck or take it off, plug any cigarette lighter on your 
backhoe. I've, I've got one. Uh, it's more of my own personal light bars. I just put it on my mowing tractor. It looks like an ambulance coming down the road mowing. So they're real handy. You just plug them in. Uh, that mower catches a lot of traffic on the road. So uh, that would be a good safety item. So I was glad of that. So that is absolutely free through TAC. That's a good deal. And then also I give you a report on the FCC on the uh, – doing our market modification for dish network we they declined it so they rejected us it was kind of when it got all into it, it kind of like going to court with their lawyers and the communications lawyers from all these people that own territories and so they have changed the laws and just within the last year since we started to file on that they're cracking down on it and with kltv's last device we got from them it's only it's almost impossible for us to get this done at this time without really investing lawyers and there's no hope that they can get it done. So um, the only two counties in Texas that got it done were two counties, Panola and Harrison County, right on the state line. And they said due to them being on the state line, uh, back when it just got started, the, the requirements were less. Now they're really cracking down. And that's across the United States. It was something to do with some big lawsuit they had in uh, Colorado. So uh, we did our best. We passed three out of the five requirements. So what I've done since then is c contacted my uh, congressman again and senators. And I also got Cole Hefner involved and told him what we were doing, at, um, trying to get their help to bring this up with the FCC. And uh, I wrote the, ro the White House. So I wrote... Uh, Donald Trump and Mike Pence, I re the only person that ever answered me was the White House, and so they're going to take their people from the White House through Trump and go back to the FCC and bring it up. So they give me a report on it. I don't know what, what they can get done, but I went from the bottom up. Maybe I'm coming from the top down. And, I, and, our, and our argument this time was due to the pandemic that's going on, we need our local information, you know, for health through news, local news. And so that may be a big plus for us. I don't know. I'm just trying another angle. So that's where that stands at this time. So another thing I want to bring up is uh, y'all probably been chastised too about that we let too many people in our meetings. And it's not a, a le legislative uh, order that we can't allow uh, 10 people in our meeting. It's recommended. But uh, the state law overrules that. So the governor's not going to overrule that. We can allow as many as we want as long as we're social distancing. And so that's why we've allowed more than 10 in our meetings. And we need to agree so, Judge. And yes, if we get too crowded, we were going to put it on the steps one day. And we didn't have to do that. So uh, we've all got those warnings from TAC on what that was on the lawyers and the, the uh, attorney general's opinion why we can't. We have to allow the public, as many people that want to come to a commissioner's meeting. So that answers that. And that's all I have. Thank you for doing by Friday, that. Uh, get those by thank Friday. you for doing that and and heading that up and for your efforts on that FCC deal. That's disappointing, but I don't yeah. guess that it comes as a big shock to you. And I understand. Now, once I got into it, um, there's uh, several counties in Georgia who have teamed up with their uh, local at architects, like our council of governments. And they're going to try to get some monies together and get hire, hire them a law firm and fight a law battle. It's probably 50 grand. Um, and there's still no guarantee that they're going to get it. So I'm going to watch, see what they do, just in case something would come up where we could get some help on it. But at this time, we can just wait and see, see what happens. So. Thank you. Make sure Applewhite. Oh, hey, Commissioner. No. I just got a text message. This must be brand new news. Our former treasurer, Debbie Ray, passed away. I don't know if that was today or if that was yesterday. Uh, no, it was yesterday or Saturday. Okay. I think it was Friday or Saturday. Friday or Saturday. Services are when? Today. Okay. Services are at two today. Two today. Debbie Ray. Where are the services? Uh, East, East, where? East, East New Hope, Graveside. Okay. Thank you all. Appreciate everybody coming. We will close with a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. 
Motion to adjourn is made by Commissioner Applewhite. Second. And second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you.